hello everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out um, to uh, hear us today, Mark Cooper and I, Nick Circle, to talk about um, pen tests and uh, ensuring that your PKI uh, not only is secure but stays that way. Um, appreciate you guys all taking the time out. And uh, just a little bit about us in case you are new. Um, I'm Nick Sarah Colbert, Director of Business Development here at PKI Solutions, um, and excited to uh, share with you guys uh, topics that uh, we hear often from our customers um, and also our PKI community, as well as um, uh, topics that we see uh, from the field from working with you all. Um, let me also, I'm also have, have some privilege of introducing Mark Cooper. Uh, I'm in Denver, by the way, so he's all the way in Portland. Uh, uh, so Mark. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks, Nick. And uh, good to uh, uh, be speaking with everybody this month. It's, it's February, 2024. Uh, I'm excited for a couple of reasons. One, we're going to be talking about pen tests and PKI. So uh, something near and dear to uh, most people. Uh, the the um, other uh, reason is I am no longer in an ice storm and uh, sitting on my uh, Starlink internet like I was last month. So uh, I, I'm excited to be here. We will be taking uh, questions as we go through. So when you get the uh, chance as we go through. If you have questions, pop them into the uh, chat or over onto the, the Q&A tab and we'll get to those. Um, and uh, it, it should be a insightful day of PKI Insights. You're not on Starlink. I'm on Starlink today. So we're reversed. <laughs> so the actual smarter person on the on the webinar is actually Mark. So that he, so in case I go uh, uh, and said I, 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 the network. Is I'll do my best to fill in for you. Just, let, so. just let me know. Just let me know. Um, yeah, uh, so the one thing, I, as you look at this, what we're going to cover today, we've got a lot to cover. You guys can take a look at the slides. But, but the bottom line is is uh, uh, we want you to walk away um, knowing, uh, having some awareness around um, pen tests and PKI. Um, and we're going to walk you through a series of topics. And so for a couple of housekeeping items, if you're not familiar with what this is, this webinar, it's 30 minutes. It's a lot of information. Um, and, and thanks to thanks to you all who provided some insights, some questions. Um, please continue to ask questions. Um, during, or put the questions in the chat. We've got Kelsey, um, and we're also looking at Kelsey looking at the, the questions and getting them over to us. So we're also going to take a look at those too. Um, and then if you ask a question in the chat, we don't get a chance to get to it. We will respond to you um, in an email and in a follow-up. Um, and if there's anything post that, then we'll, we'll obviously cover that as well. Yeah. And, and, and Nick, you know what I, I thought would be uh, really interesting to do here. I wish I had thought to do it ahead of time. Um, what, what, one is why, why are we doing this, this subject? Um, we, we, we hear it all the time, right? We, we, we hear from customers all of the time. We're, we just did a pen test and inevitably we know the next thing out of their mouth is in my PKI fail. Um, so uh, I, I wish I had thought to do this in the polling feature, but I, I would love to do a real quick uh. informal poll. So for those of you that are joining us live in the chat window, will you without, you don't have to mention your, your company name or, or anything else. Will you put a simple yes in the chat if you have been part of an organization that has had a pen test and your PKI has failed? Now, I'm going to be really embarrassed if all the people that are here right now are the ones that have been fortunate enough to never have a pen test or a PKI failure. I think that's pretty rare, but uh, yeah. as long as everyone's not shy here. They may know a friend. Really, there right. we go. All right. They may know someone. Right? There, there we go. And, and then, of course, I should have said, does the no mean you've never had a failure or you've never had a pen test uh, that included your PKI? So. Um, <laughs> all right, we're at least getting some good responses here. So we're, we're, there's definitely a good number of, of, of yeses. Um, so you know, th this is an easy um, thing to see. Uh, we, we don't want to say uh, PKI is, is immune from this, nor should you uh, not do pen tests. Uh, but we're really kind of talking about has your pen test ever turned up issues with your PKI? Um, it's certainly possible past pen tests haven't even looked at the PKI um, or, or, you know, it has and it's turned up issues. We, we want to talk about, you know, what are some of those real world things that we're seeing 
um, that our customers come to us about uh, what are some of the things you can do and we want you to kind of walk away with some some stuff that you can start doing today um, so so thank you for that uh, we'll, we'll be a, a little more proactive on those polls in the future that's a good one so, so you want me to take this nick yeah you know when that's impulsive like the pen test because there's so many different categories and we're not going to get into that and there's all sorts of different yeah. providers of all this space but yeah. uh from the PKI guy, can, I mean, what what's so important about it? Like, can you let's walk through uh, from what you've seen? Why is this so important? So I, you know, I we 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 talk about this quite a bit. People aren't doing pen tests because of PKI. It, it is simply one of those systems that that's included in there, uh, and, and pen tests have a, a role. You know, especially when they're uh, being done by uh, a third party or an outside organization, uh, or maybe even a separate group. Like pen, pen tests are just a way of validating and uh, um, making sure that your controls are, are in place. Uh, it's one thing to say, hey, we have a technology, we deployed it, it's, it's secure. Well, how do you really know? Until you really kind of test it, you don't get that validation. So uh, pen tests certainly have um, th th their role in, uh, giving us as near real world uh, validity of, of what we think we actually have. Uh, we, we know that um, there are certain industries that have requirements around pen testing. Um, I know a, a big thing now is the supply chain requirements. We, we hear from our customers, we hear from vendors, we see our customers impacted. We're saying we want to make sure all of our vendors are secure. Um, you know, this, this is a, an issue that's not just, hey, my organization, am I secure? So pen tests provide uh, a way of validating. It, it's not the only measure. And I think one of the things uh, we're going to talk about and, and one of the things that we work with customers is pen tests should not be your only way of validating uh, your, your security posture. Uh, it should be a exercise that's conducted in addition to anything else. But what I don't like about pen tests is they're simply a point in time. They're, they're simply uh, looking at what does the environment look like during this period of the pen test. You know what it doesn't do? It doesn't help you address the problems over the last 12 months or 24 months or whatever the frequency of what you're doing. It's, it's simply a test. It's kind of like the spelling test in school, right? You, you may cram for that test and get everything ready just before. It doesn't necessarily mean that you knew the words last week, if this means the day that you took the test. So I, 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 I am a big advocate of making sure that we think of cybersecurity holistically, meaning day in, day out, how do we make sure that uh, these environments are right? I mean, Nick, you, you've been on the customer side before. Um, you know, you, you, you've probably have been subject to this. You, you hear from our customers. Oh, I mean, why I, do you I, think that that's I, so I have a little PTSD thinking about, I don't know if, uh, if some of you out there, um we they were usually unannounced they you know it, it, whether you're a mature organization or not whether you have a project portfolio or not um you know they, they often you know you'd, you'd find out usually after it was done yeah um and when we did we usually never um received the results unless it was um you know you know something that was important so um and then we finally figured out, hey, you know, we, we in IT, we should probably do on ourselves just as a precursor to it. Uh, yeah. So then you'd have multiple pen tests that were done, a lot of work being done. Um, and then at the end of the day, it was it was just try to just get 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 it passed. If you pass yeah. it, then you're good. It doesn't necessarily lead into a, like an overall security strategy and work it was it, and again every i'm not talking for every organization but for some for some it was it was definitely uh, uh something that i was you know losing sleep over i was worried that hey look a little bit of anxiety <laughs> yeah yeah and, and you know i i suspect this is something that you know most people probably lose a bit of sleep leading up to a pen test like I don't know that very many people go into a pen test feeling confident that they're going to pass, especially if they haven't done anything since the last pen test. Like if it's yeah. simply from black and white, you know, we've been operating, we're going to do a pen test. Uh, if you're not really kind of monitoring and, and watching things in real time, that that's a real uh, um, uncertain uh, area. 
we, we did have one question that came in and, and thank you for this because I, I do want to qualify this. When we're talking about PKI, we're talking about all of the server and infrastructure parts of your PKI. So hardware security modules, uh, registration authorities, certificate authorities, OCSP, uh, not necessarily the endpoints themselves, the appliances and applications that are getting certificates out of that. Now they're going to be covered by pen test or, or other type of, of validation anyway. Uh, when we're talking about the PKI, we're typically talking about templates and, and CAs and OCSP and all, all those bits and pieces that go into making the infrastructure itself. And, and you know, one thing to clarify, Mark, and what, you know, when, when I said, "Hey, um, we didn't know when they were being scheduled," that that's often the right approach. You, you, sure. You don't. You shouldn't. No one is going to know when a uh, uh, attack is going to happen, uh, yeah. but you have to be prepared. So the the point that I was trying to make is, you know, there's an ongoing uh, 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 maintenance, an ongoing type of work that needs to be done to ensure that your environment is secure. PKI is one critical component part of that, but yeah. um, that that's kind of what we're trying to communicate to this team or to this group today is it's not just the pen test. The pen test is more like a litmus test, if you will, but it, it's really like, what are the practical things that we can do that, you know, around PKI? Because from, from my perspective, that's I think how I met you. Uh, I didn't realize how, how many configuration items there were yeah. for, for yeah. a CA that, yeah. that you know, could yeah, potentially it's, it's, it's not easy. It, it, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a reason why these vulnerabilities are, are found. So um, I, I, I think it, in, in short, we definitely don't want the message to be pen tests are bad. What we want, what we want to kind of cover is uh, why, like what, why, why does this keep happening? And, and the, the reason for it is that there's a lot of bits and pieces here that um, are hard to stay on top of uh, when we think about what are the components of the PKI that are going to uh, be affected by a pen test, that are going to be examined by pen testers, even knowing all of these areas, if you don't have a way of, of properly managing them, you're always going to go into one of these pen tests with losing a little bit of sleep. Um, we, we know that there's many uh, intricately connected bits and pieces that make up PKI, whether it's no objects in, in you know, AD and then templates and then registration authorities. And then we have ACLs for enrollment. We have properties of templates. We have server configurations. We have operating systems. We have hardware security modules. All of these are, are all, all interconnected. Uh, and it's difficult to kind of have a top down look when you're looking at the, the PKI. I've got eight different servers. There's many different configurations that go into that. And then how, how, how am I looking at all this? Am I, am I you know, going through and looking at registry keys and looking at templates? And then you kind of get that snow blindness of, okay, I've just looked at 12 dozen or a dozen different templates. Great, I see a bunch of checkboxes, but what does that really mean for me? What, what, what are those things that I should be looking for? So w without kind of tools, this is a really difficult thing to do. Uh, and, and I'll be frank, if, if, if I, um, wasn't fortunate enough to be a PKI solutions and I did nothing but run one PKI. I don't know if I would want to spend every day looking at all of these components to be ready for an, a pen test at any point, because you're right, it could pop up tomorrow. That's the only effective way it's going to do it. But I, I would be more concerned with, great, the pen test should be my validation, not my measure. My measure should be, I know it's secure every day through something. And the only way is to know what is it that uh, presents these vulnerabilities and how do I look at it? So we, we know that what most pen tests are looking at are aligned with some of the security things that we should be thinking about on a daily basis. Problem is that these things move. So for instance, if we just take things like uh, uh, templates, templates, uh, while may uh, be fairly static in the environment, every time we add a new application or a new appliance, we may have a new template. And we all kind of wind up with the same problem. Get some documentation from some vendor. Here's a template that you need to make our application work. And 99% of the time, it's garbage. It's something they put together in a lab. Their application worked. Um, and you now have inadvertently added a template into your environment that, that's not secure. Yep. No, no alarm bells go off. Nothing says, hey, uh, Nick, you, you should be doing this. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Um, and it's you know, since your last pen test, and you're not going to know about it from your, your next pen test. 
So just the day-to-day -day operations of the DKI, but we have a number of areas. So if, if organizations want to take something out of this uh, webinar itself and say, what am I gonna do about all this stuff? Here's a couple quick things. One, you need to review all of the security enrollment permissions in your PKI. So this means uh, who can sign into your CA servers, uh, what permissions are set on your template, who can write, who can read, who can uh, uh, make changes to those templates, where are they published, what CAs do they have them, uh, what are the ACLs on your CAs as far as who can do an enrollment, uh, web enrollment sites. So th there's just all, a number of places where uh, enrollment permissions are often overlooked because you kind of have to go digging through there and, and, and know how they should look. Then we're talking about templates and trusts. You know, what are those properties that are making up the certificates that we're going to issue? Um, you know, how are our CA keys being managed? Um, are we using HSMs? Are we using, um, you know, we, we, we had one, Nick, you probably remember when we first started uh, deploying Spotlight with a customer. Uh, they said to us, hey, yeah, we're, we're all on um, uh, AES encryption. We don't do any triple DES. Uh, all of that's gone off of the environment. Uh, and it wasn't until they had a way of actually looking at the configurations, they realized they overlooked something. Uh, and it was actually in the key archival algorithm buried deep inside the registry uh, that they didn't even know about that the CA was still doing some insecure uh, cryptography. Um, we know that. I mean yeah, yeah. They, 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 they really, they, they really believed that um, it was cor cor set up correctly. Yeah. And what what it's sounding like is, you know, the intent at setup uh, is, you know, for, even though it might be good, uh, I'll use that air quotes because we hear that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, to that, to when the environment is in use for the business with various different use cases. Um, you know, the common theme there is, I, I we're good. I, I know what templates we're using, but um, it seems like what you're talking about is this um, ongoing version of the pen test that audits the PKI to ensure that, you know, hey, if something changes, yeah. what, how are you going to know about it? Like remove the pen test for a second. How are you gonna know about that change? What are that ACL? Cause that's pretty important. I think yeah. the point of this all is escalation, really, right, Mark? It's it's yeah. it's visibility, you know, visibility, it, it, yeah, visibility, yeah. And, and then you, you kind of need a benchmark. You know, it's one thing to say, "Hey, this ACL changed." Okay, should, uh, okay, great. Why yeah. intent? Yeah. And then the other one is, why should I care? Like, well, is, yeah. is it something I should be worried about? Is, is that a normal activity? But visibility—that's a huge thing, right? Because um, we, we see this even for organizations that do a really good job of maybe designing a PKI and they, they, they you know, button down to the, the dotting all the I's and the T's, but doesn't necessarily mean it actually got implemented that way. It was designed this way. We, we do this ourselves. Hey, we designed it this way, but let's let's make sure that we actually achieved our goals afterwards. Um, so this isn't just you know, poorly run PKIs. It's simply there are so many areas of this that are difficult to stay on top of. And historically, the, the way that the technology has been kind of shown to have issues is, hey, you just failed a vulnerability test. That, that's, a, that, that's kind of like being told um, that, that you've done something wrong and that's the only time you ever hear about. It. I mean, why, why not know that you did something right? And then when the pen test comes along, it simply validates, yes, you, you are secure. You, you don't have any vulnerabilities. You pass. Now let's let's move on to some other technology that needs attention. Um, it, it's just a different mindset, but there, there's a lot of areas that uh, really wind up getting picked up in these these pen tests. Yeah, I think uh, let me let me go over to this. I think you and I both like this this slide, and and for those um, uh, watching, you know this this slide, you know really articulates. Um, you know all of the different areas that we see uh, in PKI that that are often overlooked, um, and it's not by it's not because you know they, people don't want to. I think it's complex, and often it's it's you know the the, the stuff above the surface is is usually talked about 
um, and usually the the cooler thing with with a, a leadership um, from a project or program perspective all of the stuff below is what we see right mark i mean yeah. all, time in and time again when we work with customers and talk with customers this stuff this stuff isn't uh it's a challenge it's complex so yeah. there's nothing wrong by saying hey look this is what it is it's just you know how, what we're trying to communicate with everyone is this this is what's at stake Th these are the things that need to be addressed yeah. um, pen test or not right yeah, yeah absolutely and, and you know the interesting thing is if, if, if you kind of take the, the the pen test and you kind of lay it into this metaphor it's it's not just mm -hmm. No, hey, you know, a lot of people pay attention to things like mobile device management and, and, and uh, certificate issuance. Those are important things. But uh, when, when you take a moment and you realize that all those things and all the existing tools like CLM, they're focused on the output of the PKI. They're not doing anything to make sure the PKI is actually secure or it's free of vulnerabilities. Um, so a, a lot of attention is spent elsewhere. And, and guess where the pen test is looking? It's looking at the output of, of all these things below the surface that people don't have time to. So that, that's why they're providing value is the pen test is looking at what happens in the environment because of all these other areas that people aren't properly focusing on and, and are either ignoring or lacking tools to, to be able to see. That's why they failed the pen test because there, there's this so much more than they can get to. The, the existing tooling, whether you're working with ADCS or EJVCA or, or anything, it, it, it doesn't go away. It, the tool may look different and it may present information differently, but to properly run a PKI, it's so foundational. You, you have to have a way of, of, of having visibility and managing these things. And you know, that's kind of the, the key to all of this, right? Nick, you, you said that earlier, visibility. Yeah, yeah. And, and so uh, why do you think, uh, you know, just, what's been blocking us from from getting here like, like yeah. this we can take another poll too about how P, how pivotal critical pki is um but you know what what, what do you think has been the blocker to, yeah. to getting us here well i i i, I, I to, to belabor a point in some ways that's what's the beauty of this slide right it, it, have you ever been out like on on the, the ocean or on a lake and you're sitting in a boat or maybe sitting on the pier and you look out can, can, can you see what's happening below the surface? Like, can you see the fish? Can you see whatever? I mean, I mean, sometimes maybe you're at Lake Tahoe, right? And you can like see the, the fish swimming around when you're near the shore. But for the most part, when, when the water is deep, it's, it's hard to see what's happening underneath. The visibility yeah. is the problem. Um, it, it, it may be there. Even, even if you know all of these bits and pieces, it's hard to see them. It's hard to know where they are. It's hard to find them. It's hard to get that visibility. So the solution is visibility. And the problem is lack of visibility. It's, it's the fact that it is so cumbersome and so time consuming. I think the reason why um, a, a lot of um, uh, organizations wind up seeing their PKIs fail in the pen test is because that's the one point when they finally get visibility. They find someone finally dug in there deep enough with whatever tooling that they have that they can say, oh, you know, th there's an issue. Well, if, if we want to fix that, then it's we need visibility of a different sort. We need proactive visibility where we're addressing these things in a timely, real time way. And we're not waiting to fail a test where aware yeah. of it, we have visibility, we can fix those things. Even though I've got 15 other technologies I own, I can fix it. And then the pen test is the validation. And I think that's the distinction. Don't rely on the pen test to give you visibility. The pen test is your validation. Use other tools to give you that real-time visibility. Yeah. And isn't the other, a lot of these threats um, that were uncovered in these pen tests were theoretical also, right? I yeah. mean, uh, compared to some of the other results and items in the category of, of items in the pen test on the PKI side, usually that if something was uh, reported, it's usually theoretical and, oh, you know what, it's, it's lower in the priority yeah. list of things that need to be remediated, right, Mark? And, yeah. and so I, I think we're seeing that change a lot from theoretical to, you know, reality that, you know, the bad folks are, are, are targeting some of yeah. these 
Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 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 no longer theoretical. No, we we look at things like petite podiums and inspector ops with their certified pre-owned. Now they're recipes. It's no longer you know go figure it out. It's it, no. Ironically, they've used some of our tools that that both discover and remediate uh, uh, some of these areas. They don't help much with finding um, these, along with a lot of other areas. So visibility. Uh, and addressing these things proactively. It's it's a simple mind shift. It, it's simply saying, yeah. um, you're right, um, the, the pen test shouldn't be our loan validation. Um, I shouldn't be losing sleep. I should have confidence. I should be able to run this. Um, and, and frankly, PKI is just one of those areas. Uh, I, I think it goes back to this. I, I don't blame organizations. Um, I don't blame the industry. I blame PKI. As much as I love PKI, I blame PKI, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when it was designed, it was designed and assumed that it would be operated in an infallible way, meaning it would be operated by trustworthy people never making a mistake. And when you look at the capabilities of, of PKI, its ability to operate in a disconnected environment and IoT and aircraft and all the amazing things it does today, its brilliance is the fact that all of that can be done without large infrastructure on the back end. We can issue millions and millions of certificates and maybe only need you know, two or three servers. That, that's hugely scalable. But the assumption is um, that it's going to be operated in a way that everything it produces is trustworthy and no one's going to be able to access it um, and, and do uh, bad things. Uh, the way it's used today is very different. It's, it's on networks. It's, it's connected to the Internet. Uh, we make changes on a regular basis and the people that operate it are tasked with doing 20 different things. Um, it, it is a challenging thing and the technology just doesn't have the bits and pieces to make up for those weaknesses. So we have to find a way to securely run it. It's a brilliant technology, but it's a bit like a sports car. You're not going to hook up yeah. a U-Haul trailer to a sports car when you need to move something, but you can accommodate in other ways. In this case, our PKI, it does what it does really well, but you can't depend on it if you're not going to properly manage it and, and operate. Yeah. And, and I like what you said, um, you know, the, the mindset shift. And I know we've got about three minutes left. Everyone. Oh, we got, we, this. Yeah, we're, we we're, got we're, we're, we're good. So we're, we're good. People can, uh, can stream as they want. Yeah. The mindset shift is a really important one, Mark, because I think sometimes we, we are often um, um, subject to like the priorities within the security stack and the tools yeah. that we have. And so let's let's talk about that. And I think one of the main, well, I see a lot of questions and this comes from the last webinar is, you know what, um, on-prem managed, um, you know, cloud, whatever, it, it, we've sort of seen, it, regardless of wherever it's at, uh, uh, the, the pen test results are pretty much the yeah. same, right? Yeah. right? Yeah, what, absolutely. What it, yeah, I, th I think the interesting <laughs> thing is is it, it gets a little scary when people start to realize something. Hey, if my PKI fails these 10 tests, how do I know what's happening to this managed PKI that I, I may be working with or uh, uh, I, I'm contracted to a vendor um, to, to provide? Right. Uh, they, they still have risks. And, and I hope that they're doing pen tests. And I'll also tell them they have visibility problems too. Uh, no. Now being in the business of helping organizations with visibility of PKIs, we talk to a lot of vendors that, that do managed services, that do hosted PKI. Guess what? They're all challenged with this too. They are not immune to this and they have it at a much bigger scale. Imagine the challenge of taking your existing PKI and then say, okay, now you're responsible for 400 of them, 500 of them. Uh, that problem quickly comes up. So guess what they're doing? They are hoping that they don't get breached. You know, they, they're, they're doing their yeah. best. I'm not, not saying it. No, they, they certainly do the SOC compliance. Yeah. They do the ISO compliance. And they're doing those things. Um, but wouldn't it really be interesting to know how are they effectively getting real-time visibility of, of, of threats in the environment? Uh, it's everywhere. So no one's immune. So let, let, let's talk about useful. I, I don't want this to be doom and gloom. You know, the, right. the world's awful. Um, what, what can you do today? Um, so, so, so as I said, PKI, um, it has its challenges. Pen tests have its purpose. Don't stop it. They're not the enemy. They're kind of shining a light on the issue. And it's simply a matter of accepting that that's not the, the best way to run. Uh, I do want you to be able to uh, walk away with some items. So obviously, if you're doing pen tests, 
if you have something that was done recently and you haven't remediated those issues, absolutely do. If you if you know you have an issue, if you know that you, you, you've already failed the pen test, absolutely take care of that issue. It's not going to be it. But realize something. What are you going to do about remediating the problems tomorrow? Because all that you've done by remediating what was in the pen test is address yesterday's problem. What about what's happened today and tomorrow and, and so forth? So you have to shift from this reactive space to proactive. Proactive monitoring and alerting. How do you realize what's in the environment? How do you get real-time information? And make sure that you're prepared for the pen test, not surprised by the pen test. So this means uh, evolving your thinking from, um, I want to pass the pen test to, I want to secure my environment, right? That's, it, it seems like a small little thing. Okay, I'm just going to do a change of attitude. Guess what, it doesn't cost you anything, nothing. It's gonna cost you nothing today but evolve your thinking to say, I want to secure the environment and passing the pen test is my uh, measure. And, and then that, that's a nice little uh, uh, mindset shift. And then with that, you can start changing how you do these things. Uh, whether you uh, implement tools, whether you develop your own process, but that mindset will enable you to start addressing the problem today rather than tomorrow. The other thing is don't pass this off to someone else. Someone else isn't gonna fix these problems for you. Uh, if you try to uh, um, get out of the PKI business because it keeps failing and you send it to a managed provider, they're gonna struggle. If you take the remediation recommendations and you shift it off to, to somebody else, um, they may not get to it. So, so somebody needs to own and, and champion doing this the right way. Um, the, the other thing is th there's a little bit of glory this, this here. Make your pen testers work harder. If your PKI is the easy, you no know, fleshy part of the, 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 the belly that they can always poke fun at and justify their cost, uh, guess what? When you shift your mindset and, and your PKI is, is stronger, they have to work harder. And you're suddenly going to get more value for your dollars. And then you get to do something. We, we, we didn't get to spend much time on the case study. But take a look at the, the handout in, in our case study. One of our customers uh, consistently failed their pen test year after year. And they, they said, OK, if, if I implement this PKI Spotlight tool, am I going to pass my pen test? And I said, well, I can't speak for everything else. But if your PKI doesn't pass the pen test, then we've got some big, serious problems. So they, they put Spotlight in. Not only did they pass their pen test, but their pen tester had to come back and say, we've never had a customer pass uh, their, their PKI in the pen test. Before. That's right. So, so that's a, a powerful thing. And, and then you know, the, the, the last thing, we, we, we actually had a really interesting conversation internally. Uh, someone had brought to my attention, the thinking about PKI, now, this foundational, really important technology, when we look at other things in our life that, that's really important from uh, healthcare, uh, auto, uh, uh, automotive technology, smart cars, aviation, uh, oh, yeah. everything else. You, you know, now you can go to the doctor and you get like real time doctor notes and your pharmacy will, you know, all, yeah. you're getting real time information. And, and it's because these things are really important. These are critical parts of our environment. So why aren't we expecting the same from our PKI? Why, why are we not expecting real-time information and visibility from our PKI? It shouldn't be this box that's shoved off to the side and it fails a pen test and we have to react. Real-time real -time value, information, right? Visibility, that's, that's the key here. Yeah. And um, that, that's so well said, Mark. And, and uh, first of all, we're over four. And for all of you 74 plus that are still around, appreciate it. Um, and then we're also here to help. Um, you, you've got my email, Mark's email. Um, email us. Uh, we, we can have a conversation with you um, and get your feedback, but also see how we can help because we know that it's hard. Um, we know that it's often misunderstood and misconfigured. Um, but it doesn't mean it's an excuse to to remain that way. So uh, happy to happy to continue the conversation. Um, yeah. Mark Cooper and, and, and Nick, I, I know we're we're going to be following up on questions that that we didn't get to here. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, I I see some of these remaining questions. So we'll we'll absolutely be following up on on those. 
uh, to anyone that watches this uh, after the live event. If you have questions, you can send them in uh, as, as well. We, we will uh, get back to you. Uh, the other last plug that we have, Nick, is next month, uh, Ooh, PPI yeah. Insights, we'll, we'll be sending out the link shortly. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, security within the critical infrastructure protection space uh, for electric utilities. Uh, so some really interesting things happening uh, in OT and SIP environments. Uh, frankly, this is uh, some really helpful information for all organizations. Um, so these are simply uh, things that we're seeing in these spaces, uh, but are very pertinent to pretty much any organization running at PKI. So look for that link uh, coming up for our March PKI Insights. That's right. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time a little extra, and uh, we'll see you next month. All right. See you, Thanks everyone. Again, Mark. All right. See ya. Take care. Take care. Nice chat, Nick. See ya.